What's up guys, Davinder1, 2 and 2, and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day, and today we're doing a casual one, and that is the top 5 cutest kitties in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Now despite the fact that this list is just for fun, the reason why I'm making it is because uh, my mom's cat, Bridget, uh, is no longer with us. She was super cute, she was a little tiny... <laughs> fat black kitty with a little uh little screwed up ear and she was just the she was just the nicest thing <laughs> my mom called me she was all upset so i figured instead of doing the list i was going to do i'll do just something like this because i thought it would be nice the list is relatively in order of how good the cards are but amanda and i we, we ordered these by how cute they are i think it was mostly just a happenstance that they they kind of fell in order of how good they are as well <laughs> so without further ado let's celebrate some of the cutest cats in our card game Number five is Cat Shark. Now this one might be a bit of a weird entry because the thing is just as much shark as it is kitty, but I would like to hazard the hazard the point that it is mostly cat, or at the very least, the cute parts of it are kitty. <laughs> I'm a shark cat. <laughs> Ooh. Cat Shark is a rank two water beast XC monster, 500 attack and defense, made of two level two monsters. While this card has XC material that were originally a water monster, this thing cannot be destroyed by battle. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one material from this card, then target one rank 4 or lower XC monster you control. Its attack and defense each become double until the end of the turn. Not only is little Cat Shark here pretty cute with his little fangs, he's also really not a bad support XC monster. If you play him in something like Paleo Frogs, you can get him that water material so he becomes immune to battle, and you can use his ability to boost your totally awesome up to 4400 attack power, which is actually pretty novel in Paleo Frogs because the deck does have a bit of a problem dealing with just pure beat sticks. So being able to boost your totally awesome over any of the things that your opponent has is a pretty nifty little option that you can use in that deck. Number four is Melfi Caddy. Oh, Level two Earth Beast. 200 attack, 200 defense? What do? If your opponent normal or special summons a monster, or if one of your opponent's monsters declares this card as an attack target, return this card to your hand. Then add one beast monster except Melfi Caddy from your deck to your hand. Also, during your end phase, you can just special summon this card from your hand. You can only use each of these two effects once per turn. Melfi Caddy is adorbs. He's got his belly up. He wants scritchies. But not only is he a cute little thing, kind of looking like a beanie baby or something, he's also really really good. The only thing keeping this deck from being particularly strong is the fact that it relies on your opponent to do a thing in order to get your effects off. However, the effects that you get in Melfi's are all pretty, pretty solid. The fact that this thing can search any beast monster from your deck to your hand is very strong. Notice it does not say Melfi's, it says beast. No level restriction. This thing can search alpha. Little kitty get big kitty. He is the big mean kitty. Not only that, but it can search things like Flop Ear Squadron so you can make a synchro play on your opponent's turn, which is another weird thing this deck can do. Or you could use it to get the rest of the Melfies. I love playing this deck. It was the deck that I taught Amanda how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! with, which in hindsight was probably a bad idea because the deck does a lot of weird stuff <laughs> that uh, I, I had to keep saying, okay, your deck does this thing, but normally one cannot do that. This is a bad first Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Ugh. Synchro summoning via card effect is not a good way to teach synchro summoning, I don't think. But it's certainly cute. You gotta give them that one. Number three is Cat's Ear Tribe. Level one, Earth Beast Warrior Monster. 200 attack, 100 defense. All right, so not all the cards are in, in order of how good they are, but we did think this one was pretty cute. Not only is it a cute little cat person, it's like a bunch of them. You get a whole tribe of them, it's adorbs. And actually it's effects kinda neat. I bet a lot of people haven't even seen this thing before. The original attack of your opponent's monster that battles this card becomes 200 until the end of the damage step. Actually a really interesting effect. Sure, it's no DD warrior lady, I guess, or grand mole. Making your opponent's monster's original attack 200 is actually also kind of novel because it is very rare in this game, but sometimes the language of a card's original attack changing does screw some things up. So it is at least an interesting thing that this card can do. Number two is Amazon S Baby Tiger. Oh, ho, 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 look at all. This one's like, this one is super cute. He's just a baby. This card's name becomes Amazon S Tiger well on the field or graveyard. Sure, why not? If an Amazon S monster is normal or special summoned to your side of the field while this is in the graveyard or your hand, you can special summon this card. 
Gains 100 attack for each Amazonist in your graveyard. So he's a level two, so he seems like he'd be better fit in a Melfi deck than an Amazonist deck, but he is a free body when you summon a monster. Amazonists are now like a fusion deck for some reason. So despite the fact that it might seem a little strange that's level two, it doesn't actually inhibit it too much, as well as the fact that it is just a free body and we all know that free bodies are great. So what is a free body? Let's look at an example. Got a link summon with something, right? The bogus attack boost power is probably never gonna come up. You're just using this to make something in your extra deck, obviously. Is it at least kind of interesting, you know, late game? This might be an interesting top deck to just like boop your opponent for some damage or something. It, you know, who, the, who knows? If its base attack was a little higher, that might be a little more relevant. But who cares? He's adorable. Look at him, he's so happy. All right, honorable mentions. Today we got three. And no dishonorable mentions today because there's no such thing as an ugly kitty that's mean. First up is Rin Yan, the Light Sworn Rogue. Low two light beast monster with stats we don't give a crap about. It's a flip effect that says target one Light Sworn in your graveyard, shuffle it into your deck, and then draw a card. It's, it's not good. <laughs> it's incredibly disrespectful. It is a slow flip effect monster, so it really doesn't matter what it says after flip, it's it's not going to be very good. But the fact that it shuffles a light sword monster from your graveyard into your deck is counterproductive to what the deck is trying to do. It wants more light swords in the graveyard, not less. But the draw is kind of neat, I suppose. Obviously, if you're gonna set and pass, you're gonna probably opt for a good boy Ryko. But it is a cute kitty. She's a pretty kitty. She is a pretty kitty. Second honorable mention is your play mat. Aha! I did a sponsor this time around because because last I didn't think the last video with the Dark Magician girl was I, I I opted to not do a sponsor in that one. The guys over at Your Planet are wonderful. They give me all these really cool custom card sleeves. And, you know, presumably, if you really want to, you could stick a cute kitty on them so that everyone can know that you have, like, ten cats when you go to the tournament. And finally, the other honorable mention we got is Marty. Marty, Marty's my cat. Uh, he, he's adorbs. I love him so much, even if he is basically a breathing loaf of bread. Cut to some b-roll footage I'm going to do while I, I follow him around with the camera. <laughs> hey, hey Marty, do something cute. What, 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 are you, what are you doing? Too bad I gotta kick him out of the studio when, when, when I record because he cute, but he pollute. He likes to rub on the tripod and it makes the whole camera go you know, it's, it's, it can't have that. And number one, the cutest cat in Yu-Gi-Oh is Rescue Cat. Rescue Cat also might be the best cat-based card in the game. I think this is a great number one for like every reason. Low four Earth Beast Monster, what do? You can send this card to the graveyard to special summon two level three or lower beast type monsters from your deck. Their effects are negated and they're destroyed during the end phase. But holy crap, is that never going to happen? <laughs> a staple in any like low level beast deck, Melfi's included, because it's just a plus one in card advantage. It's, it's really, really solid. <laughs> Not only is he cute, he's a great example of an errata to a card that doesn't break the card, just makes it use the way it was intended. We got a hard once per turn and it negates the effects of the monsters you're getting, so it does you don't just like rescue cat into two things and do something else with those. Because I think that was the problem really. I don't think if I remember correctly, it didn't negate their effects. So that's kinda dumb. But nowadays we can just use it to get two free guys on board, which was like the point of the card. And that's perfectly fine. The card still works as intended. Mwah. And he's cute. He's got his little hat on. He's ready to go to work. Gotta save people from natural disasters and stuff. <laughs> Could you imagine if like you're like in a you know, like in an earthquake or something and you're like in the rubble of a building and you're like, wait, I, I hear a light. And then you look up and it's just this little guy. Meow. Meow. Is, is that a cat? <laughs> yeah, he cute though. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Um, Losing a pet is, it, it's never fun. It's the single worst part about having a pet, I would think. Um, because they bring you so much love and they're part of the family. So when they are no longer here, it is, it is, it's, it's pretty rough on everybody. And, um, so I figured, you know what? Hey, this is a fun little thing that we can do. We can talk about some cute kitties and all the kitties that are important to us. And if you're not a cat person, you're a dog person, then, uh, uh, maybe, maybe we'll do cutest puppers next time. I don't know. 
It's just gonna be this monthly puppy, and there's no rescue dog, is there? Why isn't there a rescue dog? So anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed it, and remember guys, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!